Here we demonstrate how to import data into R. By far easiest it is to import data from CSV files. So if you have an Excel file, which most commonly you may have to import data from, please in Excel save that file as a CSV comma separated values file. And then you can import them easily. So here I have one of these files, mroz.csv. This is a comma separated file. In my script file, I have already set my working directory to the particular directory where I have these data. So now I need to read in this data. So I'll, I'll type in the command first and then we'll briefly discuss what it does. So we have already discussed that the smaller sign followed by the dash in R is the assignment operator, meaning we are creating some object called my data and we are assigning something to that object. What are we assigning to it? We are assigning whatever is on the right hand side. So here we are using something that's called read.csv. Now that's almost self-explanatory. It reads a CSV file. This is some sort of function that's been written by R, by the clever people behind R. And that means take that file as it is in the working directory. I don't need a path. Take that file and import the data. So let's see what we actually get from here. I'll press on the source button to run this entire script. And we can see in the environment an object appearing. It's called my data and it tells me it's got 753 observations of 22 variables. If I double click on, on it, I actually see what's behind it. I can see this little spreadsheet here and this is basically the Excel or CSV spreadsheet replicated. In the first column, we had the names of the variables. If your spreadsheet didn't have any header, you would have to change the command by adding this little bit, header equals false. The default for that read CSV function is that it thinks there's a header. If you don't have a header, you have to provide that additional information. But since we do have a header, we don't need this. So these are our data. What this object, my data, actually is, and you can see that if you hop, hover the mouse over it, it is what's called a data frame. Now, this is a very useful object that we will use later, for instance, when we run regressions. A data frame is an object that contains several variables. Now, these variables could have different sort of types of data. Okay? So you can see we have, for instance, here variables that are integers, other variables that are are real numbers. In this case, we actually don't have any text, but you may have variables that are texts as well. A very useful command to use, and I shall use that here in the console because that's possibly not something you would usually want in your script, but it's very useful to when you do exploratory work, is str and then my data. <clears throat> if you press this, what you get is a list of all the variables. So INLF, that is information of whether someone is in the labor force or not, hours, that's the hours worked and so forth, all these variables. On the right hand side, we have the first values of these variables. And in between here, we have a variable type. Now variable types are quite important. Uh, of course, for statistics, because you would have learned that depending on different variable types, there are different sort of statistics you can do. And there are also different sort of mathematical operations or different programming operations you can do on different types of data. So what we have here is integer numbers. So these are, yeah, that's it, integer numbers, whole numbers. Okay, then uh, there's a factor. I'll get back to this. There are also nums. These are numeric, they're called numerics. These are real numbers. So 2.65, for instance, 4.04, and so forth. And so 
most of the variables are either ints or nums, so integers or real numbers, but there are two variables that are factors here. That's really strange because wage, if you go back to, to your spreadsheet, that wage doesn't really look different to, for instance, rep wage or husband wage, but for some reason uh, treats it as a different type of variable. Now from this, you can't really see what the problem is. So let's try and investigate this. So one way of doing that would be, for instance, by just printing all the values for that wage variable. If you have a data frame, like here, my data, and you want to look at that wage variable, what you can do is you can type my data and then a dollar sign and then type the variable name my data dollar wage so I want to look at the wage variable and what we get is basically all the observations for this variable let me increase this a bit from the first where do we start here the first observation here the first seven on the first row and so forth now at the beginning it looks all normal but we can see at some point instead of values we just get these dots now if you know that data set a little bit, that's for those women who are not in the labor force. So for instance, we could also in this spreadsheet scroll down, we realize we need to go down all the way to 429. So here we go. You can see that for those women who are not in the labor force, they have a zero for the first variable we have this dot here, a full stop. So this indicates a missing variable. However, full stops aren't missing variables in R, they're just texts. So what R sees when, you, when we import this data is this combination of numeric data and text data. And that means that R will interpret this as actually a nominal variable or a categorical variable, in this case, a nominal variable. And that is what in R are called factor variables. Okay, uh, so it's a factor variable, the log wage is exactly the same as the wage, where's the wage here? Factor variable, 374 different values of the wages, one of them being the full stop, and actually the most frequent one, which is why it appears here first. So this is a problem. We need to change this. Now there's an easy way to do that. In R, the way to indicate a missing observation, which is what we want here, is the letter combination capital N, capital A. Now the easiest way to deal with this is to actually go into your CSV file and change all the full stop cells into an NA. Okay, so you can do that by replace all function in Excel. And for instance, if you then here in, I actually did that, I have an MR set NA file. And actually, let's try that. Okay, so I will have to have a little pause because um, Anton, my son, is waking up. I'll be back soon. So back is uh, well asleep again. So if I change this here to the NA file, this is where I replace the full stops with NA. And uh, let me first clear the environment. Okay, so if I now run this entire code again, I get my my data again, and I can see down here it has imported NAs because they were in the CSV file like that, so that's easy. And if I now look at the structure of this data frame, I can now see that the wage variable is treated as a numeric. It will have missing values, as we've seen down, down here, but it's a numeric variable. So that would really be the easiest way but easy isn't always fun. So let's try and figure out how we could actually translate. If we go back to our original file and run the code again, and now look at the structure. Now we have the factors back again. So how can we in R translate the factors into R? 
And I want to discuss this here, not because it's so fun to do difficult things, because we want to learn things and this will teach you about how to how to investigate things in, in R. Turns out it isn't really the easiest way in R to do it. And I, in the first instance, didn't know how to do it. So I referred to our good friend, Dr. Google. You type something like you want to say which programming language you're looking at. And since I did this before, it appears here, uh, how to convert factor to numeric. Okay, so this is what we want to do. You ask Google and you get some to somewhere. Stack Overflow is an excellent page to give you help in terms of programming. And then you read through this and someone had sort of a similar problem and you come across a solution or sometimes even a couple of solutions. And this is what we need. Now, and it's just slightly convoluted. I will type the command in R studio first and then I'll explain what's happening. So, of course, as I've done that before, I have that command actually in my history. So let me just save myself some typing. Oh, actually, no, it was a different instance. So I don't have it here. So let me do it in the console first. So what do we want to do? We want to replace my data wage with something else. So we want to assign something to my data wage. Now in some way, it will be based on, of course, the information in my data wage. But what will it be? So firstly, what we use is this. And I'll actually, I'll show it in two steps. Okay, firstly, we want to translate the factor variable, which is currently my date wage. We basically want to translate that into a character, a text variable. That is what this character s dot character does. So I could do this and now let me check the structure again. And what we now see is that the wage variable has been translated into a CHR, a character variable. And as a second step, we then want to transfer that into a numeric. For some reason, which I don't want to discuss, you can't transfer directly from a factor to a numeric. You have to go via the character uh, interpretation. So let me just clear the environment again, so I can then do it in in one step. So we'll execute this bit first so that we have the troublemaker. So my data, that's now our troublemaker again. We have the dots here, yeah, that's fine. So, and I know this command for translated in a character, but now that result, we want to translate into a numeric. So we, you need to read that from the inside out. First, we take our factor variable, we translate it into a character variable, and then that is translated into a numeric variable. So let's execute that. Now we get a warning. It says NA is introduced by this type coercion. But that's great because we exactly know our data do have NAs. So that possibly worked. Let's look at my data again. And as you can see now, we still have the dots. The reason is that this window doesn't update. Right? So you have to close it and then whoops, open it again. And now we can see the NAs in the wage column. Now we need to be careful. Of course, there was a second column, the log wage column, which had the same issue. So we have that down here, the dots. But now that we know how to solve it, uh, we use our second friend, copy and paste. So what I shall do is I shall take this successful command and copy it into our script. I'll clear all data again. And then I want to realize I want to do exactly the same. So I'll do 
copy and paste, just not with wage, but with log wage. Okay, so now let's execute the entire code again. And so we get the message that we have NAs introduced both for wage and for log wage. Let's look at the data. So we have these NAs, that's fine. We have NAs here and let's look at the structure of my data. Yes, that's nice. Log wage is now numeric. It has missing values, but it's numeric. And wage up here equally a numeric variable as well. So that's been successful. Uh, but what I have done with this clip is introduce your best helper, Dr. Google.